Well, as we've seen in this program and we've seen over the years, Las Vegas is a city that constantly evolves and reinvents itself. It's a city that faces challenges and doesn't just survive, but thrives. You're going to see this very clearly in the latest installment of a series of documentaries on the city of Las Vegas. This one looks at the 1930s. When the rest of the country was facing the Great Depression, people were fleeing to Southern Nevada where they found work during the day and an expanding entertainment district at night. The documentary is called The City of Las Vegas, The 30s. Here's a preview. The 1930s were a tremendously transitional time in Las Vegas, thanks in large part to the building of the Boulder Dam from 1931 through 1936, now known as the Hoover Dam. People desperate for work during the Great Depression flocked here, and the population boom turned a sleepy little town into what was on the verge of becoming a town that never sleeps. We became a 24-hour town seven days a week in the 1930s with the building of the dam, the dam workers getting off in different ships, looking for something, they would come to Las Vegas. New things were occurring, our first radio station, our newspapers became daily, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. It was just an exciting time. Certainly the dam and all of the folks that are coming in in hopes of finding work, but then there's the development of the city and community services and um, the structure of the community and entertainment and ways that people gather and recreate um, from swimming areas to, um, to dances to, um, to, yes, going to clubs and casinos, but there's just such a variety of activities that you can start to understand how exciting the experience and enthusiasm um, around Las Vegas is, how the mood and energy really comes to life during this period. We sat down with Jennifer Boyd, producer and director of the documentary, looking at the 30s in Las Vegas, and with local historian Robert Stodall to find out why this, the third in a series of specials on Las Vegas, marks such an exciting period in our history. One of the challenges of doing a documentary on Las Vegas in the 1930s is that there are so many shining objects. And one of the giant shining objects is the building of Boulder Hoover Dam. So you could almost just shift your eyeballs over to building the dam. But the effort in this documentary is to focus on the community and the people of Las Vegas and how it dealt with those, with, with those issues. Mm -hmm. Along with establishing the things needed by the city and its residents, such as daily newspapers and a city government, celebrations such as Hell Dorado were started, giving the city a feeling of unity and community. Legalized gambling was approved by state leaders in March of 1931. That same year, residency requirements were lowered to what many thought was a scandalous six weeks, making this a perfect place to establish residency and get a divorce. Hotels and casinos were opening up like the Apache, considered very high tech for 1932. With state-of-the-art things, an elevator, and something very special, doors that locked automatically the first time in Las Vegas at a hotel. There was a lot to cover in this documentary, and unlike the two that preceded it, Las Vegas the Early Days and Las Vegas the Twenties, there were more visuals to help tell the story. It's harder to tell the story if you don't have the visuals to tell the story, right? Um, what is wonderful about this period is now we truly do have the moving images. We had a few moving images in the 20s that made a difference, but now you can really see the difference. Boyd produces for PBS, said PBS International, and she did not reach such success without being a stickler for detail and above all, accuracy. So she says having more visuals, more than 1,500 still images, was a bit of a double-edged sword because sometimes we'll go through archives or family photos and they may be documented in a way that everybody is convinced that that's what we're seeing when in fact it's not the case. So one thing that's very important to me is I know this is a once in a lifetime opportunity to tell this story and it's really important to get it right. So cross-checking images three times and handling the photos with respect were the rules for everything lended to Boyd for this production. So you may rest assured, this documentary will not only educate and entertain, it will stand the test of time. 
can you imagine how special a place this is during that period of time when the rest of the country is really suffering in a lot of ways and there is this one bright spot in the middle of the desert that's unlike anywhere else in the United States and I just can't tell you what an exciting opportunity it is to tell that story. This documentary and the previous two on the city of Las Vegas were funded by the Commission for the Las Vegas Centennial. Now, the commission uses money generated from those special license plates that you pick up from the DMV honoring our city's centennial.